to the greatest of the greatest. You're listening to Full Bobby Cast. Full Bobby Cast. Full Bobby Cast. Going in no lube. Going, I don't Rod know. Dog. And that's the opening to this next episode <laughs> of, of Full Hold on, hold on. Okay. <laughs> Very sorry hey, for our listeners. Cook, I just came when you're walking on the movie <laughs> theater floor. I don't know what happened. I just rolled with it. So I apologize for anything I just said. Full, I don't. Full Bobby cast, 20 minutes to leave your mark, which is going to be a little bit longer today. Uh, <laughs> I'm just along for the ride here, I guess. These guys are out of control. We've had uh, a few beers and... Uh, gear shifted. <laughs> we did definitely reverse gear shifted in, in that as well. That's a shout out to the last... Episode. You can cut that part out. If that's you some want. RC program no, that's going gonna, on. RC program is such a great <laughs> game. <laughs> such a such a sweet game. That that little freaking yellow car that would just like all of a sudden speed up. You're killing it. You're crushing it. You're getting your lefts and your rights. This is this is a this is an NES game. You're you're racing, racing, racing. All of a sudden, the yellow one would just hit some nos or something and just and just start laughing. You. Who was your character in um, Mario Kart on 64? I loved having. Uh, uh, the turtle shell dude. Coop. Uh, they all had turtle shells. You're talking about Koopa, like the back. Yeah, yeah that Ninja Turtle, like spiked shell back. Yeah, yeah. No, that was Bowser. I was oh, yeah, always yeah, Bowser. Sorry, sorry. Well, not Bowser. No, but there was actually a he, turtle. He, yeah, the turtle guy. Yeah, yeah. He, he, uh, Koopa, I think. Oh no, no, the Troopa. I don't know whatever they called him, but yeah. but but he was he was faster. He could hit those corners very well. Let's see how deep we can go. What about Mario Brothers 2, the weird one with the egg and the dinosaur and stuff? I got a fun one. You had know. Princess that would hover, and you had Luigi, which would oh, jump higher. Oh, that was SNES. Yeah. Luigi. I got, I got one. You I guys, was Mario. I got one you guys like. Remember when we used to do at the school assemblies where we'd do like an actor and we'd trade off name of movies they're in yeah. until somebody got stumped? Let's do that with cartoons we used to watch, like DuckTales and Tailspin and what? Rescue Rangers. Are you talking like the six degrees, six degrees of separation? What are we talking about? No, no. It's like... We say like tailspin, right? Okay. And we have to go back and forth naming characters in the show until somebody gets stung. I won't do any of that. I'll, yeah, I can't do that. Okay. Well, it's kind of the same idea what we were just doing with a video game. Okay. Well, we could do video games if you want to do that. I'll, I'll see how long I can hang. SNES. So only. we just start naming video games on SNES or, or regular Nintendo. What do you guys want to do? Let's do Sega Genesis and make it hard. I'd suck at Sega. Sonic and then I'm done. Sonic and Knuckles. Sonic and That's Tails. It. That's it. Batman. I like the Batman game one. So good. A yeah. Shadow Run. We can do Nintendo. I can do Nintendo. It's like I'm, I feel like Billy Madison when I'm having that decathlon with Eric, and he plays a violin, <laughs> and it's my turn, and I hit one <laughs> shitty flat note on the clarinet, and I'm like, he's good. Bobby beat us. <laughs> Bobby beat us. <laughs> All right, we're, we're not gonna do it then. Okay, so flak jackets, flak jackets. Uh, Mark, uh, safety drinks. Go. Okay, so I'm watching a UFC, and my buddy Rick's plays. And it's me, him, his wife, and my buddy. I picture Tim. Rick is a biker for some reason. Just throwing that out there. Is he? No. Okay. Can you, can you picture Rick for us? Tell yeah, us. Describe what, Rick. What does he look like? He looks like Tom Green. <laughs> <laughs> so high school me. That's how that's what Dude, people said. We went and saw Tom Green at the parlor, and yeah. we got a group photo, and he looks just like Tom Green when they're standing side by side. Were did, they side by Tom, side? Yeah, yeah. Did Tom was, Green say anything like, hey, dude, you kind of look like me? No, but he told us about how he found his first porno covered in leaves in the woods. Dude, I found porno in the woods when I was a kid. Covered too. by leaves? It was underneath I a think bunch of I found mine as well. Yeah. yeah. Covered What's by leaves? Porno stashes in the woods. Here's why. Can I tell you my story? Because guys are weak and ashamed and they won't tell their wives they watch porn. Okay, you gotta so, hear Joe Rogan talk about this. It's it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. So <laughs> it's when ridiculous. I was like when I was like 20, 21, 22, I don't know what I was. You know, you, you, this is when the internet wasn't around. And so you kind of like, oh, you know, I'm going to the gas station. Oh, that thing that's covered, I'm going to buy that. So I did. I would drive the Cadillac. And I would. I had this gray Cadillac, 67 Cadillac. I still have it. It's sitting in my parents' house. Probably a tree is going to grow up into it one of these days. And it's just going to be like halfway up in like 50 years. But it's sitting out at my parents' place. I would drive it all the time. Feel the guilt, though. I felt the guilt. You feel the guilt when you watch porn. You feel really? the guilt. When you're younger, you're like, ah, I'm wasting time I with this. I never had that. <laughs> you don't have a conscious, you're a robot. But uh but but it felt guilt with that. And so I'm driving and uh, I'm like, okay, I gotta get rid of it. So what I would do is I would just like roll down the window. Paperboy. And just, just yeah, it. paperboy launch it out, <laughs> sh- throw it out, and then drive. Well, huh. this this was on repeat because I'm a man. And I would just like a week later be like, dude, I wish I had that. A real man so. wouldn't feel guilty in the Okay, first place. whatever. So anyway, I'm driving. Right, go buy another one. 
put this on repeat six or seven times. I guarantee like the teenage kids around the, the where I used to live were like, here comes, here comes Sam out of the Sam, sky. Sam. Dude, you were like the ice cream man to them, dude. <laughs> <laughs> they heard the, the music. Do, 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 do. Is he, is he going to throw something out again? <laughs> Dude, they, they heard you rocking Cypress Hill, and they're like, hell yeah, dude. Here, he's so I'm going to be a rock superstar, and they're like, dude, we're going to get a mag. Dude, we got a good shot. We got a good shot. Oh, he's rolled out his window. The guy's still oh, it's a loogie like, this time. If you watch porn, you feel, does, is there still guilt? In, I've never had guilt involved in I do. watching porn. Really? I, yeah. It's like, it's like huh. Joe Rogan says. He's like, don't you just feel like the biggest fucking loser after you're done jerking I think off. that's what well, it is. Well, if you can't get laid and you always have to jerk off, then you would feel like a loser. <laughs> no, I, I think, I don't know if it's that. But if you get laid and you're Dude. knocking one out in the morning, like, who cares? Here's the thing. I if my it's... wife walked in and be like, yeah, <laughs> like, okay, bye-bye. You ever, you ever, you ever hear Andrew Dice Clay talk about that? No. He's like, he's like, the morning hard on. He's like, I'll put that up against a Ginsu knife any day of the week. <laughs> but what is their shame? I don't know why the there sh- has to be shame involved. Okay, so here's here's the thing. Okay. You're you're coming from a different perspective. I'm coming from a religious perspective. Oh, right? okay, I okay. got you. So there you go. The first thing is like you start viewing women as objects. No, you, start... you don't. Okay, Jackie Treehorn that, treats that's objects. How I, like that's how I women. Do it. Oh, okay, man. that's how you do it. Because like, I never, I I appreciate the hell out of them. Like, right. Thank you so much for this content. I am now viewing. Right, but you're, but I, you're a rock star. Keep but, it up. But what I'm saying is like you don't know, you don't know their favorite color. You don't know what they like. You just look at them as what they can give to you. So you're not viewing them as a person. You are viewing them so as th- an object. They're choosing to give that to me. But so you're I'm still, consuming. Right. What, so do, do you feel like that about listening to music? It depends on what the music is. What I'm Before saying. an Napster or after an Napster? It's, it's, it's the thing is, is that it's different. I don't get off to music. I'm not using it. You, but music is pleasurable. Oh, I enjoy music. I enjoy porn. Right. I'm not saying that you don't that you don't view it, but 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 it's a little different because you're not maybe not. I don't know. Music doesn't make me celebrate Palm Sunday. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm just saying I never understood the shame thing associated with porn. So if it was the, if it was involuntary so, explo- or exploitative, is that the word? But I think so the first one is that. The second one is that it's a waste of time. Like it's Is it? Well, it could be if you get into it for I'd two. I'd say it's probably you get down the wormhole. Them. If you get down the wormhole of, of like an hour and a half, two hours. There's a wormhole there. You're like, well, you can say I the can... same thing about cheeseburgers. You ever seen Don True. Juan? Wait, hold on. I'm not done yet. Hold on, me. Third, I like this conversation right here. Third one is, you always start to compare. You could you start to compare your partner with that person. Is that the same argument against video games and school shootings? No, that's not. Are at you all. sure? Why would it be? Because you're starting. You you can't differentiate performance from real life. No, what you're saying is, I wish that. My wife or my girlfriend or my spouse looked like this. I'm certainly not. Okay. I, I, I enjoy I enjoyed John Wick, but I realized that in real life, you're not going to have a guy killing 500 people through the city of New York. I mean, but that's I, not, I can differentiate. That's different. You're not married to that person. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is that you're, 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 what you find, what you start to maybe find attractive, may not be there, and it's a dangerous area to get to. Not saying it's not dangerous for mm. you. But for some people, it could be oh, dangerous. Sure, I just don't like playing the lowest common denominator. I like I like people being able to choose what they want to consume, and that, that being. Okay. I'm not saying outlaw it. I'm just saying that because you're libertarian. For some, some people have problems with it. Right. Fair enough. Some people right. have problem with scratch tickets. Some people right. have problem with right. cheeseburgers. Some people right. have problem with yeah. anything. I know excessively g- locking their door. Yeah, I know someone who's completely not religious, and they just hate it because it wastes their. T- they're like, I'm looking at that for two hours, and now I've just wasted two. And hours being able to day. recognize that and make changes, right. good on you. Absolutely. Right. Okay, I'm glad we resolved that. <laughs> I'll just put it this way: There's two types of people in this but, world: those that pee in the pool and those that don't. <laughs> All I. All I know is that we started this episode way off, and then it just, I was like, okay, we're kind of got, we kind of, we went back to porn. And then we went right back to it. So crazy. All right. So it obviously is bad. This is, (laughs) this is terrible Sunday topics, by the way. Yeah. This is horrible. All right. So, uh, safety drinks, flak jackets. Did we even discuss that yet? No, because we talked about my buddy Rick, and then we brought up Tom Tom Green. Tom, okay. (laughs) Tom Green, was he married to Drew Barrymore at one point? Stop. How did that happen? Bobby, stop. I'm guessing because somebody has I'll a problem. You, I'm pulling Bobby back. Mark, go ahead. Okay, so we're watching UFC, like a UFC paper at my buddy Rick's place. And he's like, dude, check out my flak jackets I got, right? Because he's got like two flak jackets. And we're drinking Everclear. We're, we're, we're getting down. How long ago was this? Years ago. Okay. And so um, 
we're wearing his flak jackets around like, let's go to the fucking beak, right? And so we're like, hell yeah, let's wear these flak jackets to the beak, okay, right? <laughs> so my buddy Tim just gets obliterated. And uh, we go to the flak, we, we go to the yellow beak and we're wearing flak jackets and shit. And it's like, me and Rick are wearing the flak jackets to the yellow beak. <laughs> what are people looking at? What are they and saying? everybody's looking at us just really, really strange looks. And he's like, dude, everybody looks like they want to fight me. He goes, but like when when I'm next to you, he's like, nobody like looks like they want to kick my ass. He's like, he's like, what the fuck is going on, right? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I don't know, man. I ain't that. I have, I'm not having that problem at all, man. And he goes, he goes, well, everybody keeps asking me why I'm wearing this flak jacket. You know what I mean? Like they're like they think I'm gonna like do something crazy or stupid, right? Oh, it's yeah, a very real thought. I could see that. And he's Bobby's like, already sizing the guy up, and, and, <laughs> yeah, and, and murdered him in his mind. And, and I'm like, I'm like, dude, I'm not having that problem at all, man. He goes. He goes, what do you say when people are asking you why you wear it? I said, I'm fucking taking shots tonight. I'm being protected. I like that. I can I'm see like, that. I'm like, I'm taking some shots. i am fucking got my protection on. I'm can, ready to party. I can say I'm, you I'm put marking, the I like on for even left. Yep. <laughs> Ripped so, for my pleasure. <laughs> so uh, this is now Merry Mormon New Year. Mary I don't know what that is. Mormon. I'm not done with that night. Oh, wait. Oh, keep, keep talking going. about the night. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, you guys, you sorry. So anyway, we venture off to the crystal. By that time... My buddy Tim's just obliterated, <laughs> and he walks in, starts giving everybody hugs. He starts walking back in the kitchen, looking for food and stuff. And bartender's like, "Dude, liquor control board's been here tonight. You're kicked out, dude. Like, we can't have you drinking in here, right?" <laughs> and so we caught a shuttle there, and I call a shuttle. I'm like, "Hey, like, I'm like, dude, it's ten o'clock at night, dude. I'm like, I'm not going home yet. I'm like, but I'll pay for your shuttle, you know, to get you red." So the shuttle gets there, and he's like, "A few guys, like, he's obliterated, but he's like the nice guy ever." So. We're not taking it personal at all. And so I go, well, I don't know what to do, dude. I'm like, I paid for your ride. If you want to take it, cool. If you don't, then make make whatever decision you want. So talk to the lady. I'm like, okay, well, if he calls you later, it's up to you if you want to pick him up. But if you don't want to, I totally understand. She calls me back like five minutes later. She's like, yeah, your buddy's in a ditch across the street. And <laughs> I'm like, you serious? She's like, yeah. He like he just fell face first in this <laughs> ditch across the street from the crystal. <laughs> So I go over to uh, go over to check on him, and I'm like, "Dude, I'm like, can you walk?" And he's just he's not he's just uh, just drunk talking. And I'm like, "Okay, here's the deal, man. I'm like, I paid for your ride. You wouldn't take it. I'm like, you can't walk. I can't carry you. So I just picked up this vote for so and so sandwich board sign and just laid it over him, and then walked back to the bar (laughs) (laughs) just to make sure that he was safe. Yeah, that's a good call. That's a very good friend friend move for you. Yep." So we ready? Happy New Year! Happy Mormon New Year! Yep. What's, Another, what is Mormon New Year? Yeah. So here's the thing. He works with some. So be so be careful. Oh no no no. Okay. It, it's it's just a title for trigger words to make you laugh. Okay. All right. Okay. So same buddy Tim. My wife grew up Mormon. His uh. Um, yeah. We got we got to tread lightly right now, Mark. Oh no, it's nothing. It's nothing offensive. <laughs> we won't get Bobby fired. You have fired. a black jacket on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Um. So anyway. His friend Donna, she used to live in one of those apartments across the street from the high school or by the Mormon church. So we used to just hang out and like drink and play cards and stuff. And it was like right after Christmas time, we're taking down the decorations off the Christmas tree. And one of them's like, hey, let's go, let's go plant this tree on the flower bed over at the church, right? So like, we go out there, we dig like a little hole in the flower bed and we just put this Christmas tree right in the, right in the flower bed. <laughs> and it sat there for like over a month. Like it just blended right in. Nobody ever questioned it. It's just like each time we like each week after that when we're hanging out, we're like, dude, it's still there, man. It's still there. It's like, still there now. No, no. What happened oh. is we had another night of drinking, and then they decided they wanted to decorate it, and it drew too much attention. So <laughs> then it was gone the next day. <laughs> <laughs> but we're like, dude, what if like because it's planted like like on holy ground? What if it, like just grew back, dude? <laughs> like, <laughs> There's some seer stones that appear below it. <laughs> uh, so. How drunk were you guys when you did that? Um, I mean, I was drunk enough to still be thinking clearly, obviously. Do you, <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to ask you, have you done any pranks or anything like that when you were drunk thinking it was going to be a good idea and then it turned out to be just a terrible idea? And that wasn't a terrible idea, but what, a terrible idea. No, but I can kind of give you – so 
when my, we, we, my family, we grew up around guns, like meaning we would go up to Cumberland Greenwater and we go shooting all the time. Right. So we were always out there. Um, <laughs> we have fires. I already, know, I already you know, like shooting. where this is going. We, we, yeah. We'd have fires. We were shooting and stuff. So my parents, when my, my parents were young when we were, when I was born. So I want to say my dad was, my mom was 18. My dad was 20 or something like yeah, that. That's pretty young. Here. So they'd have all their friends over on the weekend and we'd all, they'd all be sitting around the kitchen table drinking and having fun. Um, but a lot of them were always carrying guns. There were guns there. There were just guns around. Everyone was always really safe. There was never any uh, accidents that happened. But I remember distinctly my dad walking to the store with my uncle. And my uncle was armed. And my mom and her friends deciding they were going to play a prank on them. On my uncle and them. And like scare them when they came back from the store. <laughs> and then all of a sudden my mom just kind of turned white. Looked at her and goes, oh my God, we can't do this. <laughs> He's armed. <laughs> like if we jump out and scare him, there's he's a strong shoot, chance he's going to shoot us. Yeah. Well, I was going to start. So uh, that's what that made me think of. <laughs> Do you remember when I told you that game that we used to play? Like when I was a kid and when I lived in West Seattle, we'd play hide and seek. Do you remember talking about that? No. Okay. I probably talked about this on a past podcast, but when I grew up in West Seattle, it was like everybody our age was like a girl. They were like all my sister's friends, and so like. We would just like have like a hide and seek night, but my dad, my dad had this like air pop gun, right? Where you just like a lever action and it just like make a loud pop noise, you know. And we used to play hide and seek, and if he saw you, he would like point the gun at you and shoot you, right? Oh, and you're yes. out, of, and you're out of the game, right? And so we're like, dude, like times, everything's different in a different era, right? Right. Because back then it was like harmless. But with social media, if like anybody caught wind of like a game like that being played, dude, the cops would have been at our house arresting my dad. It was like straight up Ronnie DeFeo, dude. Just like, did, did you guys ever go snipe hunting? Oh yeah, no, no, because I knew what a snipe was. I didn't I know. No I was pissed when I found out too. I wasn't the kind of kid who was like, oh, that's funny. I was like, held a grudge for like a week against my mom and dad. For, I was like, yeah, you bastards! <laughs> like, how dare you do? He that was the us. one who always got talked into going down the street and picking up a pack of smokes. Did you? No. I know. <laughs> I don't know what. Like, here's some money. Go, go ride your bike. Oh down no! The store yeah, we did do that. Pack of smokes. So there was so there was a, a place called Brown's Corner Shortstop. It was like two blocks from us, and we uh, my parents sent us down to get smokes and get beer. I that was my first job. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Keep Call going, it. Keep going, Bobby. I, night, I got something. Keep going. At night, I would go there and work, and I would fill. How up, old were you in this? Uh, I moved up here in seventh grade, so I was in grade school. Like, and you'd go grade, work at this place. Yeah, I'd go bag ice for them at night, and I tie up the bags, I put them in the ice chest. Yeah, and they would pay me ten bucks an hour, and they would give me a free fountain drink. You're like what, fourteen? No, like seventh. Twelve? I, 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 I don't know. How old are you? In like fifth, fifth, sixth grade? Yeah, okay, all right. Fifth, 12, sixth 13. grade. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, and then they would uh, give me a free fountain drink. And they pay me ten bucks an hour, and then I walk home. I was like a block away, so I worked at that Browns Corner shortstop, and that's where we grew up on the on the Indian reservation. So if you're taking, if you're coming from Auburn, yeah. and you're going, you go past the casino, right, right past the Seventh Day Adventist okay. Church. There's a gas station, right. Two blocks past that on the left, there's a row of houses on the side of the road. That's yeah. where we grew up. Oh wow, yeah. So you'd work there? Yeah, I worked there when I was a little kid. That's crazy. So when we were a kid, I grew up out in Ramsdale, Selleck. They had Truman's. Truman's is no longer Did there. Did you have running water? We had running water. It was actually heat. Yeah, we had it all. Okay, but but uh, but they had, it's not there anymore because it burned down. It was a gas station that burned. So down. So they didn't have water. We talked. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, that, uh, the funny thing is, right across the street was the, was the uh, was the volunteer fire department. So you'd think that they'd get there and put <laughs> yeah. it out, but no, they didn't. It burned down. Uh, mm-hmm. But Truman's. So someone asked me, "Why do you like Vegas so much, Travis? Why do you like Vegas?" I and hate I, Vegas. And I said, "The reason is, is because it reminds me of the King County Fair. Reminds me of Truman's, where uh, it was like the freedom. You go there, you can drink while you're walking down the street. You can go to shows. You can go. Basically, it's like being dropped off and doing whatever you want for like five days. And so <clears throat> that's what I enjoy about it: the freedom. And 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 then so you're an anarchist, I'm very. It's much like Grand Theft Auto three the first time you get to play it. <laughs> exactly, you're just killing everybody. And then, <laughs> and then, and so, but the thing is, is that that's how it was with Truman's. Truman's, you'd go in. They had the best thing when I was a kid. Didn't know they had two two, two great things that my parents never bought me, and I would buy it. I'd go get my allowance. Chico and, stick look, and was, oh, I love Chico sticks. Was and the Abizabra. candy cigarettes? Oh yeah, so good. You Sweet Lou's in town had those, and then. Also, the like warheads, the sour warheads, mm, yeah, yeah. where you just like 
felt it in the bottom of your of your like jowls. Like, do you remember the big uh, jawbreakers? Yes. Yes. Lick those forever. Yep. Oh, do you? Your mouth to be raw. Rip your tongue apart. Yep, yep, yep. What was your guys' favorite candy growing up? Sour Patch Kids. Like in the package, just like we, they used to sell them for a penny a piece. We go to the dollar, we get a hundred of them. Oh. Remember, remember sophomore year, I used to buy boxes right. and bring them. That's <laughs> right. And then uh, the caramel That's apple pops right. from Costco. The caramel apple pops Dude, used to buy the big thing of them. Caramel apple pops with it. The, They'd stick to oh, your fucking teeth. Man, so good. God, I, I'm cussing They're retainers, a lot. dude. Yeah. This is going to have to be not for up. kids, this episode. This one is definitely not for children. We start out by. I know, you should cut that out, I think. No. We're keeping that in. If you really want to, you can, but it's pretty obscene. Absolutely. You guys said it. I didn't. But so here's, the, no, here's the deal, though. We're three episodes <laughs> I didn't say in. it was okay. So, hey, so, hey, you guys are listening to this. You, this is like, oh, I'm listening to an episode. We're three episodes in. We had a couple drinks, and that's kind of where the conversation brought out of me. Dude, I was never just fine uh, holding hos- sausage hostage, man. <laughs> so, wait, what? <laughs> what is sausage that hostage? <laughs> are you talking about sausage party? That's movie? ridiculous. No, you were you were talking about a certain subject, and I said pornography. I All right, so anyway, <laughs> we're moving on. All right, underground cable subscription. Okay, what does that so have to do with anything? Same thing with my buddy Tim, right? Dude, this is <laughs> I know, we need to get Tim, Tim on the episode? podcast. He doesn't live here anymore, but Tim was awesome. So anyway, um, his brother lived on the opposite corner of me when I lived over on those apartments over by the hospital. I was by the alley, and he was over on the other corner. And he was telling me that like I could totally steal cable off of him, so I went and got like seventy five feet of cable, right? And we we hooked it to his cable box, coax cable. <laughs> and I like crawled underneath the apartment complex, going through like cobwebs and shit. It was like a combination of Breakfast Club, where he's in like the ventilation shaft and stuff, mm-hmm. and then like Temple of Doom, where he's going through all the cobwebs. But like totally crawled underneath the entire com- apartment complex, drilled a hole through my floor, and then ran the cable <laughs> up through <laughs> and jacked cable off of him. But I couldn't change the channel when I pointed at the cable, like at my TV. I had to like, I'd be laying on the couch and I'd be like aiming behind me at the wall, and I just keep moving it around until I hit that sweet spot. And so then I taped it off with some blue masking tape just so I knew where I had to point the remote to change the channel. So when I when I was a little kid, they had a. Uh, um People that were, everyone had like a similar cable box, right? Like we lived in a neighborhood, everyone had similar cable providers. Well, I was friends with the neighbor kids and uh, um, their dad, it was like a summer day. Their dad was watching TV, had the windows open, like screen in the house. I actually took my parents' cable remote and I would go over and every time he changed a station, I'd go one high. I sat there for like an hour aiming inside his window when he's laying on the couch trying to watch <laughs> shows. Listen to him get super, super pissed because he can't figure out why he can't get to the station that he wants to get to. So, so I'm just sitting there. Changing. Two clicks for every one of his clicks. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. exactly. Nice. So he gets so mad and finally he like jumped up and saw me and I was a little kid. I just <laughs> ran. I just took off with the remote in my hand. I, I remember yeah, the next door neighbors, they were, we had some crazy, you know when you're a little kid like you, you want to know something funny to me 80s we were we were free like we go to the park behind us like probably half mile away take off in the morning like grade school like uh 10 9 your parents wouldn't have to worry about you just riding your bike around town yeah, 9 10 11 years old and this is on the the the, the indian reservation like right by the main road like mm-hmm. auburn Umclaw highway statistically now we're safer than we've ever been yeah like Crime and kidnappings and and violence are way down compared to what they were in the 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. But parents are more protective and hovering and helicopter parent than ever. It's a very – Travis is a parent. So Travis uh, Travis just got back, by the way. So we're talking about how in the 80s and 90s, I'd take off in the morning. I'd be a half mile away at the park playing. We're up up by the river across the road playing. We would – my parents would just say, hey, as long as you can hear us yell for you, you're good to go. Nowadays, we are living in a safer time than we've ever lived in in our entire lives. Violent crime is down. Kidnappings are down. The likelihood of you becoming the victim of any sort of violent I, crime uh, is less than uh, – dropped by over 50% I, in the past 20 years. Except for probably kidnapping and sex trade. I feel like sex trade is huge no, no, no. right now. Se- so if you uh, – how, how much – Sex trade? So, no, hold on. How much – No, no you, sex trade? Let's get to that. Sex trade. Yes, we're talking about Thank that. Thank you. You said yes. How I much agree with me. How much would you want to bet that that kids are kidnapped by strangers nowadays? What how many kids do you think are kidnapped every year by strangers? Dude, they said something. I bet you it's a fraction of 1%. 
you bet me based off of what information? I've looked at the data before. I just don't can't remember data? off the top of my head. How what many peer kids? How data? many? Well, this, I want Andy Mead on this. I want no, Bud like on this F- right now. FBI keeps these statistics. Andy and Bud on this podcast right now. We're talking about this. FBI keeps the statistics. I bet you less than one percent of all children are kidnapped by strangers nowadays. Either way, there's been more attempts lately. No. You've seen it. Here's the thing. They're cracking down on it. Here's yeah. the thing. This is why sex sex stuff is crazy. You're talking about human trafficking. Human trafficking. That's not kids. That's adults primarily. I, well, they're, they're talking about kids. There, there are see. some kids, but it's very small. But they're cracking down. Trump has has got the most. Oh, absolutely. But th- there's still an appetite for it. How it many? It's, like, it's like saying that. Here's the thing. It's like saying, hey, guys, uh, we're not going to have any alcohol anymore. We're confiscating all the alcohol. Well, what happens? You have no alcohol run. Yeah, it still happens. So, yeah, these people are getting arrested, and there's people that are uh, – people being reunited with families and this and that. There's still an appetite for people out there, obviously, because if there wasn't, then they wouldn't be doing this in the first place. And so you're going to see more abductions or attempts and this and that. So I disagree with you on that, that, that I feel like it's more – I think it's, I think, feel like there's more – 74 percent decrease since 1990 of kids being kidnapped by strangers. But what if it, it's people they know? See, the key word well, yeah, is strangers. But the, yeah, but still, you're, if your kids out roaming the streets and like playing with their friends, right. the likelihood of them being the victim of a violent crime or kidnapped by a stranger is a fraction of one percent. In the 80s, it was higher, and we had more freedom and less helicopter parenting. Something about our culture has changed in the past 20 to 30 years to make parents and kids, parents more feel for, fearful, and in turn, kids more fearful. I'll tell you exactly and it's, what it and is. And it's irrational and unjustified for the most part. I'll tell you what it is. It's because when we were growing up, we saw kids on the side of milk cartons, and they stopped doing that. Well, because it was too too effective. Pretty effective stuff. All right, so underground cable subscription. We talked about that. Homeless appreciation. Let's appreciate. We already we already talked about that. All right, great. Now we're going to move on to uh, big breakfast for the for the kids. Yeah, yeah. Did we talk about that too. Not yet. Okay, go ahead. Just okay. just to preface my data real quick, I pulled that up real fast on Google. If I'm off by a few percent, please forgive me. Uh, the thing is, is that I don't know if you guys have known where Bobby gets most of his data from. Though it's it's from a website. It's called uh, pull, uh, Bobby's Ass dot com. He pulls it out of Bobby's ass. He just <laughs> ooh, I'm seeing some fighting eyes. Look, look up, <laughs> look up any debate I have on on Facebook, and if you have questions you about any claim I'm actually making, I, nine times out of ten I provide a link to to some kind of uh, um, you know respected uh, study or source. I don't I I don't like start arguing with emotion. I try to argue with fact. Now. Where me and my brother differ is I realize there's a human element to everything, and I try to incorporate that in, in what I'm saying. It's all in you, context. People, you, people, if they know your intentions, like even though like the context may be different for them and you, if they know you as a person, then they know you don't have bad intentions or you're never trying to offend anybody with anything you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Fair this enough. episode's a shit show. You, I want to see you just use human – what did you say? Human intentions? Human, human – uh, like there's a human yeah. element. Yeah, there, there's uh, humans are fallible. So like football, you can't go off pure statistics because you cannot fact the human element. Will you is tell a your brother this? It's a variable that you can't account for. <laughs> Do you know about the conversations that Ty- that Tyson? I've, he- he- I've, I've heard your guys' oh podcast. Oh my gosh, and, and, and there's there's the human element you can't account for, and that that human element is everywhere. That that's where irrationality comes from. That is from. insane. That is incredible how how different you and Mike are. Mike feels- I used to be like that. What? No, I w- it was hard for me to factor in the human element. So I thought that you could drive everything down to a falsifiable claim. And I realized that you can't make falsifi- falsifiable claims about everything because a tr- truth is, is not objective. People want to say that it is. But if you put human knowledge on a scale of 1 to 10, and if we're only at 3 or 4 when with the with the uh, uh, 10 being us reaching the highest level of the intelli- of human intelligence attainable, and we're at a 3 or 4, then how can you claim at a 3 or 4 you can have objective truth when you don't know everything that there is to know, where if you get to level 10, right. then you could say everything factually. This is objective truth. It doesn't exist. Everything comes down to opinion and preference. Everything. I can't think of anything that doesn't. I'm I'm open to me being incorrect about that. I can't be wrong if I'm always right. I'm so, open to being so incorrect. Is that, so is that an objective truth? No. 
that you could be wrong? Oh, that I could be wrong? To an extent. So it depends. So this is what Andy and I were talking about. So if if you believe in the scientific string theory, for instance, or if you believe in infinity, that means that every possibility that can happen is happening alongside every other possibility that can happen is happening. So every everything is objective truth because everything that is physically capable or, or, or existent, existence is capable of happening is happening. You know what I love about this podcast? Talking about porn, we're talking about this, talking about, and now we get into like string, string theory, theory. <laughs> objective truth, human emotion. If, if it's if infinity is a real thing, then that means that everything that can happen is happening. That means that every possibility that could occur is occurring within the confines of the universe. But can you confine the universe? What I mean, you, this is a rabbit hole you can get down, which is why I'm trying to say that objective truth, maybe it exists, maybe it doesn't, but you you can't argue from a position that it does because we don't know. And let me tell you this. There are no rabbit holes. That was my Siri. There are no rabbit holes, and there are no uh, arguments that Eddie Martinez is afraid of. Thank you for the monkey's paw. Is that true? I mean, I'll talk about anything. Yeah, you will. I know. You and Mike both will. Hey, the guy who invented the computer does not live inside the computer. <laughs> Well, you heard you heard simulate. There's strong arguments for simulation theory. Oh yeah, yeah. But then that gets in. You can also kind of taper off that subject into religion. So simulation theory is there a grand creator, and would that grand creator of the simulation be God? You and would, is that what's actually happening? You would think. Yeah. You would think that. I mean, if it's if I'm certainly open to that possibility. There's some sort of creation out there. Yeah. All right. Uh, Tarot abbreviations or Tourette's. Tourette's. Oh, so like you know, like how funny would it be if you like saw somebody with like. Well, there's ticks and Tourette's either way. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, if you saw somebody that like had a tick with like, Tourette's, as, uh, the, like you the, know the ticks are like the get, yeah. get that dog, yeah, like, like Wolfman tick. right. ticks, right, right, yeah. <laughs> okay. And then uh, <laughs> and then Tourette's. It's like <laughs> so. Like, what if like somebody just yelled out like abbreviations, but that was like their Tourette instead of yelling like you know like curse words or just like you know laugh my ass off you know what i mean or fml you know what i mean they're just yelling abbreviations lol but, yeah yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> did Tourette's must I, stfu I, I, I feel for people that have Tourette's, man that's got to be that's got to suck yeah do this kid just like, to randomly spout out things well, without I heard having that's any a control small percentage of the people with oh wait Tourette's. that's what you do all the time bobby i do <laughs> this kid in like bobby's and- going to be murderized i want murderized i want to get murder not murderized. I don't want to get murderized. You ever watch Ray Donovan? I want Bobby's murder eyes. You ever watch Ray Donovan? Mm-mm. Oh, one of the brothers the in Ray Donovan has Leif Tourette's. Schreiber? Yeah. Yeah. I like Leif Schreiber. I do too. Yeah. One of, uh, so one of his brothers in the show has Tourette's. Cotton Weary. Yes, you're right. It's true. What's, and, what's that? From Scream. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's Cotton. Cotton Weary, dude. Killed 50 men. Oh, that's Cotton from King of the Hill. Never mind. <laughs> Well, Cotton Weary was from Scream, I right? I dropped in another reference. Yeah, you have you, Bobby Tourette's. I guess I'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> Re- reference Tourette's. We, so <laughs> you have that too. Yep. You have movie reference Tourette's. Tourette's. <laughs> oh, you guys are friggin- reference Tourette's, dude. I like it. I like that though. Tourette abbreviations: STFU, uh, LOL. LOL, SMD, Talk to you later, TTYL. What's that song? LMFAO. The, the all of their songs work out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Klondike Derby Gone Wild. Okay, so you know Mike, my buddy that listens to podcasts. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We Shout got all these Mike. like stories from like being a scouts, but this one didn't involve him. This was like when I was in scouts in West Seattle. So we went to this thing called a Klondike Derby where it's like you have a sled that you make with like cross-country skis, you know, seats. Somebody sits on it. And then you have a bunch of loops and a rope and you have people like human power the sled, you know, like a I did a rock or something. Right. And so we're doing this Klondike Derby and we, we go do our competition. And then afterwards, there's a spot where like it's just a little hill where people will take their tubes down, you know what I mean? And sleds, whatever. And so it starts out where there's like two lanes and they they they're separated at the beginning but then when you get halfway down they join in the center so we're going to take our our sled down which is a lot heavier than a tube and there's like this heavy heavy set kid sitting at the bottom of the hill and so we're waiting getting everybody out of the way before we go down trying to be safe we fight we finally get this kid to move and so my buddy mike goes down in in the sled and he's hauling ass right like a lot of weight behind this thing. He's got a lot of momentum. This kid comes out of nowhere on half a saucer. Half. 
a saucer. <laughs> and he, he comes down the other lane. My buddy has no idea he's coming because there's like a mound of snow separating yeah. it. And then right when they get down to like halfway down, this kid comes out of nowhere on half a saucer. Dude, I think you cut your hand off with the half goes a saucer. right in front of my buddy who's on a sled with like cross country skis and stuff. And my buddy's like, shit. And he like digs his heels in the snow. Can't stop. Just blast this kid, dude. This kid. Oh. Saucer goes flying into fourth sections, right? <laughs> and he's caught underneath the sled, just rolling like a oh, crash. Ow, ow, just ow, flopping ow. around like a crash test dummy, right? And he's stuck underneath the sled going oh. all the way down the hill. And then finally the sled keeps going. He's just laying there lifeless. And we're like, oh, shit. I think this kid's dead, right? Oh. And kid just starts crying. He's okay. His dad's like hella pissed off, getting in my buddy's face. And then his own friend's like, no. Nah. They told everybody to get out of the way. He was stupid. He went out in front of him. He got hit. It wasn't their fault. Like oh, good. his own friend wouldn't even back him up. But wow, that's the Klondike Derby, dude. That sounds like the freaking <laughs> get murdered on that. Uh, you want to say something, Bobby? Bobby's got to get out of here. So we're gonna I go. Do. We got five more minutes. You got five I'm more. I got five more minutes. And then you're gonna go uh, barbecue. Dad's coming over. Yeah, and, doing uh, a little bit of basement stuff. Yeah. By the way, speaking of this, we moved Bobby. I didn't talk about this on the one of them, but uh, we lugged this gigantic like that heavy. That couch is gone now. Yeah, I know. Okay. It's I, downstairs. I know. Yeah. We had a move. That's what I was going to talk about. We moved this big old, just heavy ass, like, sofa that's electric. You know, you can recline and this and that. Do, 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 Got do, do, it do, do, do. out of his old house, into his new house. I helped, had by the way. I wasn't that setting one. up my internet. That was really cool to Bobby to help that one piece move, of- Move my, move my <laughs> stuff. To move your stuff. That was very cool of you to do that. But then we, we go over there for a UFC fight, and I'm like, this is a brand new couch that he's got here. Got it from a buddy, and I don't know if we can say it or not. I don't know. But oh, kids, no, why not? Uh, Tyson sold me. His, and it was uh, when he grew couch. up. It was uh, one of the ones that he grew up it's, with. Here's the deal. I, I, it's a nice couch. Yeah. I didn't realize how nice till he told me it was like 16 years old. The cushions are still good. The oh, leather so is still nice. good. It's incredibly comfortable. There's yeah. no tears, no stains. No, nothing. Yeah. And it was in his house, yeah. and he grew up with it, though, yeah. too. Yeah. And Andrew knew, you know, that's one of Andrew's. Andrew came kids. over last night, and he goes, oh, the corner's taken, because he knows the good spot on the couch. <laughs> hey, Bobby, can you tell me some more excellent features about this couch? It's it's <laughs> it's a sectional with an ottoman, and when you push the ottoman into the sectional, it's larger than a double bed. So can I ask you another question? Yes. Why are you not working on Allen's instead of the car? I worked shit? at Allen's Furniture. I deliver- that makes perfect sense because he's selling me this couch. <laughs> I deliver- I'm going to go dumpster diving for this thing. Dude. One of my first jobs was they have the sidewalk sale in downtown Enumclaw every summer. Oh, so one dude, of my you first some good friggin' deals. You do. Too. One of my first jobs was delivering furniture for Allen's during the sidewalk sale how did i know that dude i just sensed it by the way he was so excited to tell me about this couch <laughs> <laughs> and then i go downstairs because i was like showing my wife around the studio and whatnot yeah showed her everything i'm like there downstairs is this piece of like heavy it was it's not it's a great couch Top grade i don't want to call it yeah. a piece of crap because it's not a piece of crap it's a good couch but it was just a piece of crap because it was heavy it was like what yeah, else? Yeah. yeah well it says so, pos but pos stands for something different yeah it was just a piece of heavy shit and uh Anyway, we, I see it just sitting there. I'm like, I could have saved so much back muscles and, and this and that if we just put it, would have put it here. It's true. It's yeah. true. Did you fix the gate on the back gate yet? No, I'm going to do all that stuff in the summer. We're, so right now we're, we're focusing on the inside, figuring out what we can do with our the, the podcast and the downstairs and classes and stuff. Dude. And then the attic. That and then room. Springtime will be summer. Is legit. Yeah. Like my, not- I like my room, but his room is like phenomenal yeah. it's so good and i like what i told liz this to send her a message yesterday because she was posted a video of her playing the piano <clears throat> i love the new setup it's nice to see a full piano room where you guys were at before couldn't do it you know you nope. got the catching the kitchen cabinets from behind this ceiling and, that. and stuff yeah here it's like it's crisp it looks yeah. great it's, and so I'm, I'm i'm excited for her to have that so you're kind of i'm not to i'm Geek out too much on recording stuff. I looked up uh, to capture piano. Uh-huh. Like, what kind of microphones would be best to capture piano? Chaotic. Uh, they are expensive. Yeah, look up look up chaotic uh, eyeball. Chaotic eyeball. Yeah, it's expensive, but once you look it up, just so you know, you'll have a zillion advertisements on Facebook if for you, chaotic eyeball. Yeah, have you ever heard of uh, the comedian? Uh, is a comedic singer named Tim Minchum? No, I have not. You ever watched Californication? I have. Yeah. He's the guy Atticus. Okay, yeah. He's a comedic singer. Like he he plays piano and he sings funny songs. He's you ever got... been to dueling pianos? Oh yeah. I oh, saw it's a someone blast. post about that. At I've the never Munch gone. Bar in uh, in Bellevue. I used so to go there. I saw him in Vegas because we used to go to Vegas every year, and then I saw them in the Longhorn by the Super Mall in Auburn. They had dueling pianos. They had a 
bat like a dueling piano uh, piano bar next to the Munch Bar in Bellevue. I used to always go across the Sky Bridge and check it out after a comedy show. Hey guys, I hate to do this. I really do got to go though. I'm not trying to put a hard end. You guys can keep recording. If no, you we're, good, we're good. We're, 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 we're gonna we're gonna do a group sign off. You're gonna say the cities. Yeah. And then so I'm. Gonna, I, I was lost last time. You no, no, no. Some you'll get this one. You'll get this one. I'll start off the closeout, and then you just finish the. Phrase. Okay, I'll say the cities. Okay, all right. So people that listen, where people are listening at, a lot of people in Mexico. So, uh, uh, rock on, Mexico. Rock over Canada. Shake and bake. What? <laughs> and you helped. Shake and bake, and I helped. Just like the couch. And I helped. Just you, like the couch. Yeah. Do you remember that? Remember no. the, the 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 commercial. I have no idea. Shake but and bake. It's shake and bake. And I have like that. Okay, we'll do that. Uh, rock over uh, Argentina. Roll on Wisconsin. Bud. Wise. Err. <laughs> okay, I'm with you. <laughs>